I get asked a lot of questions about programming, but I don't think they're the right questions to ask. Questions like, which programming languages do we need to know as mechanical engineers? What language should I learn to get into company X? What's the difference between Python and C++ and which makes more money? Which one should I write on my resume to impress employers? So why do I like these questions? Because they are simply empty questions that serve no particular purpose towards helping us become better mechanical engineers who solve ubiquitous problems facing humanity like pollution or less prevalent issues like helping those who got mauled in the face by their pet chimp get a face transplant with state-of-the-art surgical instruments. Instead, a much more purposeful question that we should be asking is why should or shouldn't we learn programming in the first place? I think oftentimes we're just brainwashed into learning skill X or skill Z for the sake of learning it, but rarely do we consider the bigger picture and why we should learn it. Programming, like all other skills, is just a tool. You write code to automate tasks or perform certain actions. For example, we can program a motor to move the right wheel of a robot to make it turn left. Sometimes we get caught up in learning a particular CAD software or programming language. Just because company X listed it as a qualification and we fantasize about working there that we completely forget why we wanted to learn these skills in the first place. You wanted to learn CAD because you saw the amazing things that can be built using CAD, not because you wanted to land a job at Apple or your dream company. Build something that's meaningful and impactful. Build something that solves a problem. CAD is just a tool in your arsenal to build something that can change someone's life. It's the bread and butter of a mechanical engineer. Similarly, programming is the bread and butter of software engineers used to build amazing products. So why shouldn't mechanical engineers also learn to code to design better and smarter products, especially given the rapid development of AI and technology? You're probably also wondering, do and will employers require us to know how to program? The answer to both of these questions is a resounding no. Nope. And here's why. The role of every mechanical engineer is different. But 99.9% .9 of all mechanical engineers either design, analyze, test, and or optimize products or processes. Products that we can work on include anything that you can touch, like the smartphone, tablet, or laptop you are using to watch this video, as well as refrigerators, vacuum cleaners, robots, drones, cars, elevators, CNC machines, airplanes, rockets, submarines, and much more. Aside from these awesome products, we also develop processes, which could be a manufacturing process like a physical vapor deposition production line or an automated forging production line. So let's make a crazy assumption that we looked at every mechanical engineering job that exists in the world and made a list that combines all of the duties of these jobs. I can confidently say that programming would not be a skill that is required or central to 90% of these roles. That's why software engineers exist, right? Now, of course, there are a small portion of mechanical engineering jobs that do require programming, but one could argue that these are more software related and we'll talk about these later in the video. So as a mechanical engineer, we need to develop an essential set of hard and soft skills that will make us a better innovator, creator, and problem solver to design, analyze, test, and or optimize products and processes. These essential skills are developed over years of working as a mechanical engineer in a professional setting and doesn't happen overnight or simply by attending university. That's why learning how to code can actually distract or derail you from developing these primary skills, especially if you're a mechanical engineering student in university with a packed schedule. Based on my experience, most MEC-E curriculums will include a fundamental programming course anyway, like MATLAB or Python. Now, if we dive deeper into the scope of a mechanical engineer's job, let's determine which specific areas need and don't need need programming. The design aspect requires us to apply our technical knowledge of solid and fluid mechanics, heat transfer, material science, thermodynamics, design for manufacturability, and more to design mechanical parts that are assembled to form mechanical systems, which are integrated with PCBs, sensors, wires, control modules, production code, and more. Mechanical engineers design parts and assemblies leveraging computer-aided design software like SolidWorks, Creo, Inventor, or NX, and generate 2D technical 
graphical drawings from these parts so that they can be manufactured. Of course, we have to work with software, electrical, optical, quality, and manufacturing engineers to ensure all facets of the design meet specifications and are production ready. The key technical skills that mechanical engineers need for design are engineering theory, computer-aided design, simulation tools like FEA and CFD, design for manufacturing and assembly, prototyping, and electromechanical system design. Essential interpersonal skills that any type of design work requires are communication, teamwork, time management, and creativity. So we can see that programming is a skill that is out of the picture and is pretty much irrelevant to mechanical design. Of course, there are a select select few areas where programming is essential depending on what you're designing. One example is automotive control systems like active suspension systems that involve creating and tuning control algorithms. Robotics is another one involving programming for motion control, sensor integration, and path planning. This could be a Roomba vacuum cleaner, DaVinci surgical robot, or FANUC robotic arm. Aside from design, mechanical engineers also perform various types of engineering analysis for products and processes to make important design decisions and gain valuable insights into their performance, ergonomics, quality, and feasibility. This includes finite element analysis or FEA which can be used to simulate how a product such as a jet engine nacelle will react to different loading modes, heat, vibration, and other physical effects and help identify areas of high stress and potential failure points. We also perform computational fluid dynamics or CFD analysis to understand the behavior of a fluid in systems such as a fuel pump and a a car or a turbine and a turbojet engine. Some others include failure modes and effects analysis for identifying failure modes of products and processes, their causes and effects on the system, as well as prioritizing risks and implementing mitigation strategies. For instance, if we're performing an FMEA study on a CNC machining process, it will look something like this, where the first column shows the potential failure modes, such as incorrect tool setup, the effect of this could be poor surface finish, and the cause could be operator error. We assign ratings on a scale of 1 to 10 to the severity represented by S, occurrence represented by O, and detection represented by D. Severity is the impact of the failure, occurrence is the likelihood of the failure to occur, and detection is the likelihood of detecting the failure. We then multiply these three numbers together which gives us the risk priority number or RPN. The higher the RPN, the higher the priority for action. We then implement corrective actions and and continuously improve the process, enhancing the training for proper machine setup and operation to minimize risk. We can also perform design of experiments to identify key variables affecting product performance or manufacturing process yields and optimize for specific parameters. Now, if you're designing products, you'll very likely also perform tolerance stack up analysis to ensure all components fit together properly and function as intended. This helps identify potential assembly issues and minimize manufacturing costs by optimizing tolerances. Now we've said earlier that programming is rarely or never used in mechanical design. Programming, however, has several use cases in engineering analysis, but it's definitely not a must-have skill. For example, FMEA, design of experiments, and tolerance stack-up analysis are all done in specific software such as Jump, Minitab, Excel, or Acetal with relatively straightforward calculations, so no programming is needed. Now, if you're building FEA, CFD, or multi-physics simulations to analyze a problem using commercial simulation software like Ansys, Abacus, Hyperworks, or Comsol, you won't need to know any programming in the majority of cases. However, you should have a solid understanding of numerical methods, governing equations, discretization, boundary conditions, physics, and engineering theory to accurately model problems and interpret results. Now, just as a caveat, programming will be important for simulations if you are solving specific unique problems that require creating subroutines with user-defined functions. For example, defining custom material parameters or failure models will require programming. If you want to become a mechanical engineer who builds and runs simulations for a living, I strongly advise learning a programming language such as C, C++, or Fortran and reading through the user manual of whichever software you plan to use. Most research groups and universities that focus on numerical simulations of interesting real-world problems like the deformation of lithium-ion car batteries will require some type of programming. So if you're planning on getting a master's, PhD, or doing a postdoc, 
specializing in numerical simulations, then it would be smart to learn programming. In some cases, you'll have to analyze large data sets obtained from simulations, such as filtering, performing curve fitting, or interpolation that will require an intermediate understanding of programming. But this can simply be Python, MATLAB, or Excel that has a short learning curve. Another key area of a mechanical engineer's job is testing, which involves verifying that a component or product meets design specifications and functions as expected under real-world conditions. Physical testing involves designing, setting up, and running tests, as well as collecting and analyzing data. This could be performing a battery crash test for electric vehicles to simulate and assess how high voltage batteries respond in accidents. It could also be performing a full vehicle crash test to issue a safety rating. Key skills include knowledge of testing equipment, measurement techniques, data acquisition systems, and statistical analysis. Minimal programming is generally used here, with the exception of data analysis, which involves using specific software tools like Excel and MATLAB that don't require an extensive knowledge of programming. However, if you're doing automated testing that involves writing scripts to control test equipment, log data, and analyze results, learning programming such as Python or LabVIEW will be important and will Will help streamline testing procedures. Finally, mechanical engineers also engage in optimization. In most cases, optimizing a product requires us to run multiple simulations and studies to identify the best design parameters. For example, you could perform generative design or topology optimization in CAD or simulation tools such as Abacus or Optistruct. This will require very little to no programming. However, if you're optimizing a control system to achieve a desired output, response, and stability, then you definitely should learn programming and softwares like Simulink. Now, one platform that helped me develop the relevant skills for mechanical engineering is Brilliant the sponsor of today's video. It's the best platform offering thousands of hands-on lessons in programming, math, physics, data analysis, and AI. Brilliant breaks down complex problems into easy to understand components. Their interactive quizzes and animations allow you to experiment with new concepts. This method is proven to be six times more effective than traditional lecture-based learning. Brilliant's content is designed by professors, researchers, and professionals from places like MIT, Caltech, Google, and Microsoft, so you will be learning from the best. Brilliant is all about developing critical thinking skills through active learning rather than memorization. Brilliant also promotes a habit of daily learning that's essential for personal and professional growth. Learning will always be exciting with Brilliant's fun and engaging lessons. Thinking and Code is a great course that I took on Brilliant that builds a strong foundation in writing robust programs to solve real world problems. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash engineering gone wild or check out the link in the description below. You also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now, hopefully after watching this video, you won't learn programming just for the sake of learning programming or any skill for that matter. Programming is a powerful tool, but it shouldn't be the primary focus for mechanical engineers based on the scope of our job. It can, however, be a secondary skill that complements our core engineering knowledge. After all, we are embedded systems or software engineers. Remember why you were drawn to mechanical engineering in the first place. Don't lose sight of that passion by getting sidetracked with skills that aren't central to your role. Always prioritize what will make you a better engineer first. If coding supports that goal, then great. If not, don't feel pressured to learn programming just because it's trendy. Alright guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching and be sure to join our new Discord server through the link in the description below to connect with fellow engineers and engineering students on this channel. This Discord server will be free to join for a limited time. Also, if you would like to support this channel, we just launched three tiers of memberships that you can check out by clicking the join button below. Your support really means a lot and makes this channel possible. Anyways, thanks again for watching. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my video here where I talk about the best mechanical engineering skills to learn. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.